afternoon, eight minutes past three. It's Pat and the team here through until six on Drive from BBC Radio Kent. Now, if the lockdown is getting to you, as I've got to be honest, it is to so many of us, and you're feeling lonely or isolated, our next guest may just be able to help. It's a pleasure to welcome to the show Leslie Noel Hitchcock, who joins us. She started Friendly Faces of Kent nearly four years ago. Leslie, afternoon. Good afternoon, Pat. Thanks for inviting us on. Now, it's good to talk to you. I'm fascinated by what you do. The group has been running for some time. Uh, tell us the circumstances under which you started it, Leslie. Um, well, after my marriage of 22 years broke down, I found myself isolated and lonely. And I looked around for a group that was suitable, that wasn't a gym, and I didn't really want to meet anybody else. And I definitely didn't want to do knitting. So I was looking for something different and found that there wasn't anything in my local area. So um, just popped up a post on my Facebook page and um, a friend of mine on her social media page asking if anybody wanted to meet up, meet up for a coffee and a biscuit. And 50 people turned up. So, yeah, the uh, hobnobs didn't go very far. <laughs> <laughs> 50 people just on the strength yeah. of that. Yeah, well, wow. that was just local on the Isle of Sheppey, actually. So, okay. um, so I realised that there was a need for something that was a bit different than the normal. Yeah, and the variety of people who showed on that that first get together. What sort of people came along? Um, a, a wide range, really. Um, we've had members from the age of eighteen up to ninety four arrive on that day. Um, so, a wide range of age groups. And um, and different backgrounds, really. Some of the younger people were students that were away from their normal home environment here on the island, going to college, mm. with missing families. And then the older people who had lost partners and maybe family had moved away. And at that initial meeting, what did you just all sit down, fight over the hobnobs and have a chat? What did you get to do? <laughs> It really was, to be honest, because we obviously weren't expecting that amount of people. I just thought it'd be a couple of friends or something that'd seen my post would turn up. But, yeah, um, yeah we just sort of was astounded, really, by how many people locally that were really, really lonely. So, yeah, we just supported each other, made teas and coffees and enjoyed each other's company and come up with a plan, really, to decide that we needed a regular meet-up. So you didn't have a long-term plan initially, then? No, not at all. It was literally that. Meet up for a cup of tea and a coffee. And I just thought that a few friends would turn up. Perhaps we could do that once a month or something. And when I realised the scale of the problem, I just realised that there was a real need for something a bit different in our local area. And since then, moved further afield. And of course, this is well in advance of the pandemic, isn't it? Yes, yeah. It was way before then. And to be honest, since the pandemic, um, we have doubled in numbers. So it's it's just grown and grown and grown. And how many people are part of your group now then? 460 members Good. we have now, Pat. Yeah. God, um, we've got four hundred, just over 400 on Facebook. Oh, on social media, I should say. Yeah. Oh, and um, and um, those that aren't on social media equate to about another 60. And did you say that you've expanded beyond the island now? Yes, yeah, we have. We initially, historically, we were doing groups on the island in Sittingbourne and Tenham. Um, but of course, since the pandemic, we've had to actually divert most of our um, resources and support to social media. And so we actually span the whole of Kent now. And what about people who are lonely or feeling isolated, but don't have access to social media? Um, we produce a monthly newsletter so we can send that out to them, um, which sort of details all that we've been doing um, on social media and physically um, face-to-face because we can still actually offer essential shops and pharmacy runs. We do a friendly uh, voice call, so a telephone call to those that aren't on social media once a uh, once a week to keep them informed and keep them connected. And um, they can still join in the quizzes via our news newsletter and we do lots of other things. We've got a book club 
that um, we do once a month. And we've also now started up a sharing community library where all of our members can swap around books and um, we bring those out and deliver those once a month. You must have had loads of tributes and endorsements from people down the years that you know you and the service has, has made a difference to. What sort of things do people say to you? What feedback have you had, Leslie? Um, well, prior to, um, to the pandemic, people were just enjoying sort of getting together socially. We were going on walks once a month with another group um, across Kent, which was amazing. And I think that people were just enjoying that connection again with our local community. But obviously things have changed a lot since COVID and having to do, every, well, most of what we do via social media and virtually. But people are just really pleased to still have that connection. And we've found that we've actually reached a different group of people that we'd never have met these people via our group settings because they're actually always housebound. They're people that can't physically or mentally be able to come to any of our groups. So we've actually touched on to them now and they're actually um, pleased to be a part of Friendly Faces of Kent through the pandemic because it's actually opened more avenues. And I think they're slightly worried that after the pandemic, things might all shut down again and they're back to square one. But um, with Onward Funding, we're going to carry on supporting them. They have all joined in at our community sharing library and enjoy our monthly newsletters and they all get the voice calls. So they have. this has really opened up avenues and doors mm. for some people. We, you know, we're so quick to chat about how it's been awful and isolating and lonely, but in actual fact, we've found we've got another 50 new members that would never, ever have been able to have accessed our normal services in the normal way. And as we know, any of us can suffer the effects of isolation and loneliness. There must be an even greater cross-section of Kent people who are part of the group now. Definitely, for for lots of different reasons. You know, um, some, like in my situation, um, where um, relationships are broken down and find themselves without their usual friends that were normally couples, being able to go out and about together, suddenly you lose all of that. As I said, we've got students that are away from home. We've got older people that haven't got family here, so they're really, really pleased with the services that we are offering at the moment and you know extended to their families we're having letters and emails from their families saying thank you so much for supporting my relatives through this terrible time because they're obviously not able to 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 do that in the normal way and as you say with 460 members currently there is obviously a huge demand for what you do are you a charity now then leslie or not we're still actually only a constituted community group, a non-profit making community group, but I am just in the process of registering for charity because now that we've, you know, grown this big over the pandemic, we realise that there's a great need for this to carry on afterwards. And of course, if we do get back to our group settings, the social media side would obviously reduce in the normal situation. But because we have all these new members that will only ever be able to access social media and enjoy our friendly voice calls and our sharing community library as such, we want to become a charity so that we can get onward funding. Because it is freely available to anybody, is it? Or, or is there a charge to, to join? No, there's no charge to join at all. Um, the only stipulation is that you're 18 or over and that obviously you're needing to reconnect with your local community. Um, it doesn't matter what, for what reason or circumstance, what any health issues are, just 18 or over, you can pop onto our social media page, Friendly Faces of Kent, and it's just the process of joining the group, and then you'll be able to access all that we do on there. And we've also got a YouTube channel as well, Friendly Faces of Kent, so you can even just have a look on there and see what we've had going on, Pat. How do you find the energy to do all that you do? <laughs> difficult at times. <laughs> yeah, difficult at times. And I think with the situation at the moment where, you know, um, it's difficult to go to certain places and, you know, we're doing personal shops and things for people. Mm. So, um, you know, it is quite difficult. And obviously there's a risk as well involved for ourselves. So, you know, we're trying to... 
keep ourselves safe, but at the same time still support all of our members. But um, I'm also a carer for my parents. Um, and so, yeah, time's an issue sometimes, but I always manage to squeeze everything in. I'm one of those people that has lots of energy and I manage to do it all at the end of the week. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> you are brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Leslie, we need more people like you. <laughs> I'm just thinking if our listeners are hearing about, you know, friendly faces of Ken for the first time this afternoon and would like to get involved, how can they yeah. do that? What's the best way? The best way is to go on Facebook, join our Facebook page, um, but they can always email me at Leslie at friendly faces of Ken dot co dot UK and I can put them in touch. Um, via our friendly voice calls. Um, but, yeah, go on our Facebook page is the easiest way to get in contact with us. It is absolutely brilliant. And who knows where it's going to go over the next year? Do, do you have ambitious plans for the next 12 months? Um, I think really, Pat, just to continue at the moment, until we know from government guidelines when we can actually get back as a group, I think that um, the so social media side of it will just grow and grow. We've got new activities going on every month. We do cooking, gardening, poetry, Zoom walks. We've got some challenges going on at the moment around health where we're getting people to get outside um, or even in their own homes, increase their steps by 5% a week, and that's going fantastically. So, yeah, just sort of keep thinking about new ideas, getting feedback from our members to find out what they want, and just keep supporting each other, really, through this really difficult time. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I hope we get to talk again. Leslie, thank you so much for being with us. And just remind us again of the email address if people would like to contact you directly. So thank you, Pat. It's been great to be on here and really lovely. So, yeah, anyone can email me directly. It's leslie, L-E-S-L-E-Y, at friendlyfacesofkent.co.uk. An absolute star. Leslie, have a great afternoon. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Take care. See you later.